Hello everyone and welcome back to another furniture flipping video. My name is Samuel with Cedar Pine Designs and in today's video I will be working on a mid-century style cedar chest made by Lane. Uh, this is going to be a restoration so with that said let's get our hands dirty. Typically I start off by cleaning my pieces and getting them ready to prep but for this one the legs are broken in the back so I have to create some new legs for it. So I'm going to take that apart, disassemble it, and then I'll probably start by cleaning everything up. The base is held on by about six screws and maybe some wood glue, but I think that dried up so the base comes off fairly easy. The inside of this chest is in really good shape and you don't want to refinish these or seal them because the cedar is meant to keep moths away from your clothes or your blankets or anything that you decide to store inside of them. Now that the base is removed, I get a good look at what I'm working with. So I'm using TSP degreaser to wipe it down and take off any dirt or grime so that way when I go to sand it, it doesn't ruin any of my sanding pads. From all the lane cedar chests that I've ever seen, I never seen one that has these inserted slats and I got a really good idea for these ones and stick around to the end so you can see what I do to these. Unfortunately the lock doesn't come with a key, but it still functions very well and I'm sure that there's a way to get a hold of one, so I'm going to look into that, but I'm not sure how much luck I'm going to have. As you can see over the years, there's a lot of dirt and grime that builds up in these small cracks and crevices, so it's a good idea to really get in there and clean these out. Once I'm done getting the rest of the dirt out using some compressed air in a can, I get my pick tool and a rag and I clean the rest out with some water. As I like to do for most of my pieces that I strip down, I use Clean Strips Chemical Stripper and the reason for that is because it just takes a lot of the elbow grease out of doing things and I don't really like to sand too much so this makes quick work to get some of that to finish off. For this piece I'm going for a restoration look, it may not look identical but I'm not going to add any paint to this piece so I have to strip this whole entire thing down and sand it down to bare wood so that I can stain it. When using stripper, especially a chemical stripper, you want to make sure to not let it dry out and some tips that I got in the comments below that I haven't really used yet but you put some saran wrap or plastic wrap over your premium strip and it keeps it from drying out. After I'm done stripping it down I like to use mineral spirits to deactivate the stripper and use some steel wool and a rag to clean off the rest of the residue. For the legs and a piece of the stretcher I have to rebuild them from scratch because they were just in bad shape because whoever had it before tried to repair it by just stuffing a bunch of glue inside the cracks and it really ruined the wood. I'm using the old legs and the old stretcher to trace out some new pieces. I bought a piece of poplar from Home Depot and that's the wood that I'm using just to create the new legs. I'm using my palm router with a 1 8 inch roundover bit and I'm doing that so that it'll match the front ones and it'll give it a softer edge. Having a workbench with a built in clamp is very convenient for holding pieces down like this so that they don't move on you when you're trying to route them out or cut them. After removing the damaged stretcher, the dowels broke off so I'm going to have to hand drill those out and re-glue in some new dowels so that I can join everything together. I'd like to take a second to thank everybody who watches my videos and leaves me just the most wonderful comments below. Um, I appreciate all of you and thank you very much for coming back and watching all of my videos.
I start with a 150 grit sanding disc to sand everything down to bare wood and then I use up to 220 to get all the swirl marks out and I'm going to do this for the whole entire piece because I plan on staining it a two-tone color. I'm removing the top to make it a lot easier to move around and also when I go to stain the top and the sides I don't really want to get any on the top side of the inside boards so this is just going to make it a lot easier. I'm sanding down the back but I don't plan on sealing it or anything like that because it's cedar. I just want to clean up some of the water spots and stains that it had just to clean it up and make it look really nice. After finishing up with the electric sander, I go ahead and hand sand all the tight corners and all the tight spaces that the sander couldn't reach. I start off with 150 and 220 grit to clean it all up. All the trim pieces on the front have to be taped off because I plan on doing those a separate color that I'm doing for the body. And especially too, they're two different types of wood. I believe the veneer is like a walnut and the front is some sort of poplar. That I'm not sure of. Um, leave a comment below if you can tell what kind of wood it might be. Uh, it'd be very helpful. Same thing I did for the back, I'm doing for the bottom. I taped off the serial number and I'm just gonna scuff sand it up just to get rid of any imperfections. And I don't plan on sealing that side either. For this piece, I'm using a dark walnut varathane stain. It's oil based, it takes quite a bit of time to dry, but because of the difference between the wood, it's gonna give it a nice contrast between the body and all the trim. For the body, I'm using the same dark walnut, and as you can tell, it's a lot darker, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. The more coats you put, the darker it's going to get, and for me, one coat was more than enough. It's just as dark as I want it to be, and look at the contrast between the body and the trim pieces. Now that the body, the top, and the base are all done being stained, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the whole thing back together so that way I can get it ready for top coat. I didn't show it in the video, but I did trim off about an eighth inch on each side of the top because it did have some veneer chip out and it looked kind of unrepairable. So just by doing that, you'll never even notice. So I'm going to take some Barkeeper's Friend in the liquid version and I'm going to try to polish out this lock and see what kind of look that I can get out of it. I was quite surprised to see it polish out to like a nice copper color and I think it's going to look amazing once it's installed. For this piece I decided to give it a polyurethane coat because of high traffic to the top that it can potentially have. So I'm using Verathane's polyurethane water based with a satin finish which is my favorite go to.
I usually apply about two to three coats of my polyurethane with scuff sanding of 400 grit in between. I use 400 grit because I've noticed that 220 grit will leave some scratches behind if you're not careful and I'd rather just use 400 grit to give it a nice smooth finish in the end. Polyurethane tends to go on with like a blue hue but don't worry because once it's dry that goes away and it's completely clear. So like I said in the beginning of the video, there are these inserted wood pieces and I didn't really like the look of them and they didn't match the stain that I put on there. So I decided to go with this black and gold geometric shape just to give it a nice modern look and you can always pull them back out if you don't like it and you can also do another pattern on the other side so you can give it three different looks. I measured the very center of this wood slotted piece and I just picked a point of the geometric pattern to line up with that middle piece so that my other piece can be symmetrical to this piece. A razor blade makes quick work of trimming off this wallpaper and now that that's done that's the last step so let's go ahead and take a look at how this piece used to look before so that way we can see what it looks like now. Thank you to everyone who made it to the end of this video with me and stuck around for the final piece as well as the numbers and profits I made off of this one. I paid $80 for this chest and spent $60 in materials to refinish this entire project including the wallpaper and the wood. I then listed it for $600 and got my full asking price within 2 days netting me a profit of $460. I put a total of about 6 hours labor making my hourly rate around $76 which is a huge score. I can't wait to see everyone in the comments and on my next project. Thank you for sharing this journey with me and I'll see you on the next one.